Well, it sure is good to be here. We're going to be in Matthew chapter 11 in a moment. Um, what a song. Um, I hope you know you're saved to the uttermost. Uh, no part way deals here. You either know the Son or you don't. But I'm so glad to be here. I am so thankful for the years and more importantly for the people that I had the opportunity to serve with here for 28 years. And uh, have uh, Pastor Willett as my uh, pastor, and mentor, and boss. And uh, I'll tell you what, uh, I couldn't have had a better Christian uh, to watch over me than Pastor. And I am thankful for him and his life and his testimony. And uh, as a parent, I can't tell you how blessed I was to have him as an influence over my children. Now, I'm just going to testify for a moment. Um, and I'm not talking against anybody that does different than this, okay? Uh, how many of my children do you think that I baptized? None. I'm not their pastor. Pastor Willett's their pastor. And I can go on. I didn't marry anybody either. I'd just stand there and cry. I wouldn't be able to do anything anyhow. <laughs> Look at God is blessed me. And you're a part of that blessing. And I'm glad to be here. And I want to say thank you. Uh, songs. Uh, do you remember singing a song like we just heard a little bit ago about I need thee every hour? Yes. Do you know how many times you sang that? A whole bunch. At least a dozen. At least a dozen. Uh, how'd you live today? Were you aware that you needed him every hour? Now, I hate to do this one to you, because but the Lord did it to me, so I figure it's fair to share. <laughs> How do I know that I'm living like I need thee every hour? It's in the song. Do you know what it is, Brad? I come to thee. You know how I know I need him every hour? Because I'm here. I need him. I need him right now. It's too easy to live our life busy serving the Lord and forgetting what's important. I need him every hour. Look with me to Matthew chapter 11. And I'm going to read a very familiar passage. We're going to start with verse 28. And we're going to read down through verse 30, chapter 11. Jesus is talking. If you go back to the beginning of the chapter, John the Baptist sent some of his disciples to check out and make sure Jesus was the Messiah. And he assured him he was with Scripture. And then, a couple other little things, but he's talking to the Jewish people. And he says in verse 28, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. I'm ringing. Am I all right? Okay. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy. And my burden is light. Lord, I do ask that you'd uh, use these moments. I thank you for the word of God and that it's quick and powerful. And Lord, I pray now uh, that you would help me. Uh, Lord, guide my thoughts <laughs> and my emotions. And Lord, I pray that this time would please you. In Christ's name, amen. Uh, we're going to look at this passage. And I, I'm going to divide it up into three statements, three ideas. Um, the first one, I, the first one, it says, come unto me. 
I want, I want to take a second. I want you to look at with me at this passage. And I'm going to read some words. Just follow along here. Start with verse 28. Come unto me. I will give. Take my yoke. Learn of me. For I am. For my yoke. My burden. I just want you to get the picture. This is personal. Jesus Christ is talking to you and me. I, me, my. That's what this is about. It's about him. It's about him. The first invitation here is come unto me all ye that labor and are heavy laden and I will give you rest. Remember, he's talking to the Jewish nation. He's talking to the, the, the men, the women that are Israelites. And I'll tell you what they're, they think they're doing. They think they're working their way to heaven. They're trying to keep the commandments. They're trying to be what God has told them to be, that they might be in heaven someday. And guess what? They can't do it. The burden's too much for all have sin. Hey, there, Old Testament, there are none righteous. No, not one. Uh, if anybody says, okay, I can get to heaven by being good, then here's your problem. What do you do when you weren't good? What do you do with them? I can be good. But what happens when I'm not good? How do I take care of that? Well, in the Old Testament, they offered sacrifice. But the problem with that was their hearts weren't right. Listen, this is personal. God, Jesus Christ, says to you, says to me, to me, 1972, Come unto me. Come unto me. And I'll give you rest. Now listen. I was taught. All it is, is it's a balance. And if you can do more good than evil, you're going to make it. Now listen, that is not in the Bible. It does say, that even as a Christian... We want to do good, but I can't just do good. I've got a problem with I do wrongs, and I can't take care of them by doing more good. And I didn't understand that until I heard the gospel of Jesus Christ. On October 10th, I trusted Christ as my Savior. Now listen, I didn't trust a church. I didn't trust baptism. I no longer trusted trying to be good. I trusted the Lord Jesus Christ, and he said, come. And he paid for my sins. I, I, when I heard the gospel, you know, and I was giving this guy a little grief, and, and he finally asked me this question, because I kept talking about good work, good work, and he said, so why do you think Christ died then? And then he said, to pay for your sins. Amen. He became the just and the justifier. He kept the law, and he justified by his death and his shed blood. And finally, I understood. It took me some week, a couple weeks. But you know what I finally did? I came to Christ. He became my Savior. He became my Lord. Now listen. He became what I wanted to live for. It was personal. I, I was overwhelmed by the fact that God, and I was, you know, I had a man that came into my life and taught me uh, that God 
left heaven, was born in a manger, lived that perfect life because he was God, and how he was treated and spit upon and slapped and, and then hung on that cross for me. And this guy, he was an old guy, he was in his 60s. And, and he explained to me, he explained to me that the worst part wasn't all of that which just, just repulsed me. He said the worst part was as he hung on that cross becoming sin for Bill Swain, God the Father. His father turned his back on him. He forsook him. Listen. Come unto me. Come unto me, all ye that labor are heaven laden, and I, Christ, will give you rest. Amen. Take my. Listen, these are invitations, and the first one is to come to Christ for salvation. For he is the only way. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes unto the Father but by me. Me. Now listen to me. He did, but it was by Christ. Christ did that for me. I hate to say this. Hey, I love JD, but he couldn't die for me. He can't even take care of himself. <laughs> he needs Christ as well, doesn't he? It's, yeah, we're all in the same boat. There's no reason for us to have a problem about pride. I need him every hour now as a Christian. I can't do what I'm supposed to do in my own strength. It's him. So look at this next thing. He says, take my yoke upon you. Now, here's what this yoke he's talking about is. And learn of me. Listen, I come to Christ. I humble myself. I admit the fact that I can do nothing, say nothing, be. I can't be anything that's going to get me to heaven. I can only get to heaven by Jesus Christ, by coming to him, humbling myself and admitting that I'm a sinner and I need to be saved by grace. But that's the beginning. The next thing is learn of me. Learn of me. Who's me? Jesus Christ. I'm, I'm not trying to be whatever. But tell me something in the last couple of days you've learned about Jesus. What do you know today about Jesus Christ that you didn't know last week? Oh, I got it. You know all. You got it all down? You listen to me. Complacency is our number one enemy. If you're going to grow in Christ, you keep learning. I, look at, I, you know, I still, when I get in the morning and I'm reading my Bible and God shows a truth to me that I need, I just get all tickled. I, it's, I, whoa, wow. And I see him in scriptures and I see his love and I see his plan. And J.D. talked about it this morning. We don't understand it. And in unexpected places and in unexpected times, he shows us grace and teaches us something more about himself. Amen. Learn of me. I'm going to say it a lot, guys. This is personal. Amen. He isn't saying learn a whole bunch about the Bible. No, I'm not saying, I'm not, but you know what he wants you to do? He wants you to learn about him personally. Amen. Learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest for your soul. You want peace in unsettled times? Know him. I get it, I do. I just, I, 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 tr I love Paul. And Paul was really an old man. He was in his 60s one day when he said that I might know him. 
No, I, 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 I'm just telling you, every time I think of that verse, every time I read that verse, here's what God says to me. So you think you've got it figured out and Paul needed to learn more of me? That's where it's at. Learn of me. Now look, I'm not going to go there, but John 15, I love it. But there's a progression if you go backwards in the chapter. Knowing about Christ causes me to love him more. The more I know about him and who he is and who I am, who am I? But he loves me with an everlasting love. Fathomless. And the more I know him, the more I love him. Guess what? The more I love him, the more I obey him. You understand that? I love this verse, Ephesians 5.20. Faith that worketh by, anybody know what the next word is? Love. Faith that worketh by love. Do you think it's easier to trust? And believe if you love? Yeah. If you understand how much Christ loves you and I love him, it's a whole lot easier to say yes, sir. So knowing brings me to loving. Loving helps me obey. Obeying helps me abide. And abiding helps me be fruitful. Isn't that what you all, we all want to be? Is fruitful for Christ? You know what you need, keep needing to do down there? Keep being fruitful? Keep getting to know him better. Because then you'll love him more. Then you'll obey him more. He'll abide. He'll be fruitful. You don't water the plant once a year. Well, maybe I do, but it doesn't work. In Tennessee, they're telling me there's plants we're supposed to water more than once a day. Sheesh. Hey, I need that personal time with Christ. I've been saying this. Some of the young people here old enough. They heard it. This thing we call Christianity isn't a way of life. It's a relationship. Amen. And that relationship does demand, make demands on my life. But it's not. It's not a way of life. It's a relationship. And that's what we need to have. And the way I keep that relationship fresh is to continue to grow to know Christ more and more. And I'll never get it all figured out. And please, I hate to burst your bubble. When you get to heaven, you're still not going to know everything there is to know about God. You know why I know that? Because you're still infinite and you're the creature. You are not infinite. We'll spend eternity learning about God. He is beyond our ability to understand. It's like trying to pour the Pacific Ocean into my brain. And guess what? He's bigger than that. He's infinite. Right. Know him. Learn of me. Learn about me. Learn of me. See me in your life and see me at work in your life and see how I'm working all things together for good. Be aware, be circumspect, not just to see and be careful for how Satan might be after me, but to see how and what God's doing in my life right now. Yes. Learn of me. Learn of me. And verse 30. For my yoke is easy... And my burden is light. Look at 1 Thessalonians chapter 1. Verse 9, Paul's talking to this group of people, and he says, For they themselves show of what, us, what manner of entering in we had unto you, and how you turned to God from idols to serve the living and true God. 
reasonable service. I'm saved to serve. I'm saved to be like Paul and say, Lord, what hath for me to do? What is it? What am I supposed to do, Lord? Our, our, our focus is on how can I serve the Lord Jesus Christ? What can I do to further the kingdom? For me to live is Christ. To die is gain. For me to live is who? Christ. It's a personal thing. And I serve him because I love him and I know he loves me. And as I serve him, I see him at work. Uh, look at in Colossians chapter 1. I'm going to read more than I have to here, but this is a, I love this prayer. It starts in verse 9. For this cause, if you go back, because he found out that these people have been saved. He's never been to the city of Colossus, Paul. He says, For this cause, we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you and desire that you might be filled with the knowledge of his will and all wisdom and spiritual understanding, that you might walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work, in the knowledge of of God, strengthened with all might, according to his glorious power, unto all patience and long suffering with joyfulness, giving thanks unto the Father, which hath made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light. Now listen to me. It's as I find God's will, and as I walk worthy of the Lord Jesus Christ, and I am fruitful in those good works that God has before ordained for me to do. I increase in the knowledge of God. That's what it says there. Increasing in the knowledge of God. Listen, you're not going to learn about God when you're out of God's will for your life. When I'm not doing what it is that God has for me to do. That's when I'm going to learn and see God at work in my life. Providing, protecting, caring, leading, giving wisdom. All those things. Hey, hey, it's when you're out there and you're doing, you know what God wants you to do and you have no idea what you're doing. Just like J.D. told us this morning about running the church. He said, I don't know what's going on. Isn't that how he said something like that? Okay. All right. Okay. I don't know when we're meeting. I don't know what's going on. Look it. You know what? God's going to answer his, his questions. You just keep doing what you know you're supposed to do. One time, one, oop, that's, I got that, I got that. And guess what? You'll see God work, and you'll be able to keep on moving on. Amen. It's pretty, I'm sorry, but, you know, I know I'm out of the world of God, and I say, no, Lord, I really have a need right now. I need you to show me how I can take care of this need. Hello? You know where you need to start? Lord, forgive me. I've ignored you. I'm going my own way. I haven't followed you. I'm not in the path that you have chosen, the race you've chosen for me to run. Lord, forgive me. Lord, help me. Save me from this mess I've got myself in. Show me what to do. Search me. Try me. See if there will be any wicked way in me. And what's the last thing? And lead me in the way everlasting. What came before leading you in the way everlasting? Search me. Try me. See. Look. Service is the greatest joy that he offers you. There is no greater joy. <laughs> I'm, I'm even older than the guys that helped me. And I promise you, as I think back on my life, joy is when I saw God work through me and those that I worked with to make a difference, an eternal difference, in the lives of other people. Amen. There is no greater joy. I mean, I own a Jeep Wrangler. But my joy is 
stories and people I look around here that I've known and they're still faithful, still doing what they're supposed to do, had a part in their life. I, I, do you guys remember when J.D. came to First Baptist? I mean, hello. You know what he says? He keeps telling me, for the first year he was here, I didn't talk to him. I probably figured he wasn't worth it. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if that's true, but I mean, either of those. Uh, listen, what, what, a, what a joy to know that I had a little bit to do with his life and others. Hey, uh, <laughs> I do not regret any time that I spent with you, with J.D. I can remember the first time I took him to camp and I told him we were going to pray all night for the kids that are in the camp. I think, hey, I think, I think you made it an hour. No, we did well. Hey, listen, Christ, come unto me. First of all, for rest, to know in your soul I've got a home in heaven. We call that salvation. Number two, come unto me and learn of me. Oh, please. This is the key to so much of it. The rest of the, the, rest of the deal. Learning of the Lord Jesus Christ personally. Having a relationship with him. A personal relationship. He speaks to your heart. He convicts you when you're heading in the wrong direction. He convicts you when you say something you shouldn't have said or thought something you shouldn't have said. And you have a relationship with him and you can go to him and talk to him and humble yourself and ask and seek forgiveness. And, and you have... He's my friend. But he's my savior. He's my Lord. I have a relationship. And then, Lord, what wilt thou have me to do? Hey, uh, I'm yours. What do you want me to do? Do you want me to teach a Sunday school class, work in the junior church, help on a bus route? Hey, listen, I know there's lots of things around here to do. Some people have been here long enough that you remember when I would come up to you them, like Archie, and say, Archie, I've got an opportunity for you. And they all knew what that meant. Now, I didn't say I was God, but I let them know there was opportunities. Hey, you know what? Look for what it is that God has for you. Right. Seek it. Apprehend it. Go out and get a hold of it. And give it everything you've got. Um, I'm going to read one last verse. And it has to be in the book of Philippians. I do want you to know, well, I do count it a privilege to have this time with you. But look at chapter 2, verse 17. Here's Paul. He's talking indirectly, but he's talking about Timothy if we keep reading. But he's talking also to these people in Philippi. And he says, Yea, and if I be offered upon the sacrifice and service of your faith, I joy and rejoice with you all. Find yourself some lives that you can take your life and pour it out on the altar of their faith. That's discipleship. Don't, don't. It's not going through a book answering questions with them. It's personal. Amen. It's one on one. And it's me doing all I can to pour my life and my passion and my love for the Lord Jesus Christ and my desire to please him and my desire to know the truth and into that heart. I will very gladly spend and be spent for you. 
I will very gladly spend and be spent for you. I'm just going to ask this question, then I'm going to turn it over to JD as we think about this part of service. Who's your you? I will very gladly spend and be spent resources in my life, my energy, for you. Who's your you? Who are you pouring your life out into? Judy. Three invitations. Come unto me. Have you trusted Christ as your Savior? Whether you're here or online, have you, have you acknowledged you're a sinner, that Jesus is the only way to heaven? Have you come unto him? It's personal. The Savior of the universe, the creator of the universe, says, come unto me. Take my yoke upon me and learn of me. I think anyone who knows Brother Swain on any level, and I know him very well, and have been, spent a lot of time with him. He's a dear friend. But if you know him just a little bit, you know of his love for Christ and his love for others. What example for us. I think he's right that one of our greatest enemies is complacency. We can come and we can sit here. We can look nice and go back home and check off the box that came to church. God must be happy and miss the whole point. Lord, help us now. Lord, thank you for the man of God who brought the word of God and the message of God. Lord, help us to be honest with ourselves. Lord, if there's someone here tonight who's not saved, Lord, help them to trust you. Lord, help the Christian who has been touched by you or in some way to turn back to you. My friend, if you're here tonight and God touched your heart, in just a moment we'll stand. That moment when we stand, the altar will be open. Have you been learning about Jesus Christ? Are you serving Jesus Christ? And if you've never trusted Christ, may today be the day you trust Jesus Christ. You can trust Him right where you're at at home. You can pray and ask Him to save you, and He'll save you. He'll hear you. You can pray a simple prayer like this, Lord, I know I'm a sinner. I know I deserve to pay for my sin. But I believe that Jesus died on the cross for me, that He was buried and rose again. Please save me. I trust in Jesus and Him alone. And if you ask Him to, the Bible says He will save you. Would you stand to your feet now, Lord, bless this invitation. May we respond to Him in Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs>